Alrighty, so I was looking back and I discovered that we did a video in installing Home Assistant about a year ago. But when I watched it, it wasn't that great as far as my standards today, at least my feelings for what we're putting out today. So I thought I'd remake it here in 2023 and show you guys the way I'm installing Home Assistant now, today. So first thing, we're here at Home Assistant and we're gonna go up to documentation and installation. Then I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to alternatives. And here for the QCOW2 file, the KVM slash Proxmox file, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy the link. Now I'm going to go over to my Proxmox web interface, select my server and select shell. Here at the shell, I'm gonna type W get and then I'm going to paste in my link. So with my link pasted, I'll press enter and this will start downloading it and we'll be back here in a second when it's done downloading. Okay, so now that we have the file downloaded, we can next unpack it because if we run an ls command here, we can see that it has some weird funky extension. So it does end in QCOW2. So it also has this XZ compression applied to it. So in order to do that, we can use the command unxz and then we can take and enter our file name and press enter and this will decompress that file for us. With that file decompressed we're able to start heading back to the Proxmox web interface here and at the Proxmox web interface we need to now create a VM. The fastest and easiest way to do that is click create VM and we'll give it a name and then we cannot use any media for our machine we're going to select Q at 35 and for our BIOS we're going to select UEFI. For our UEFI disk, we'll select local LVM. And we're going to uncheck pre-enrolled keys. If you don't, you will not boot for this particular installation. Then we're gonna hit next. We can just remove the disk. For minimum requirements, we're going to give it two CPU cores, two gigs of RAM, and me, myself, I am going to select VMBR4. Now, if you have a particular bridge where you put some of this stuff, it's a good idea to select it at this point. I have a particular VLAN that all of my smart home equipment goes on, and that's tied to VMBR4 for me. So now I'll hit next, and then finish to confirm everything, and we're gonna start making my drive. All right, so with our VM created, now we need to take note of our ID, which is 109, and we're going to select our server and select shell. Then, then we're going to use this particular command right here, qm import disk, container number, in my case 109, image name, and the drive. My default drive for Proxmox is called local LVM. If you have a ZFS installation or something, it may be a little bit different, but it'll be local dash something anyways. All right, so we'll hit enter. Now that the command prompt is returned we, and we successfully uploaded the disk, we can again close our console, select our VM, and we can go to hardware. We select unused disk zero, press edit. And because I'm on an SSD, I'm going to check discard. If you're not using an SSD in your Proxmox system, there's no need to check discard. We'll hit add, and that's going to add the disk to the Proxmox VM. Now we're gonna go to options, boot order, edit. We're gonna uncheck net and uncheck our CD-ROM and check our newly added drive and select okay. Now most likely, you're going to want Home Assistant to boot up if your Proxmox server reboots. So we're going to select Start at Boot, press Edit, and check Start at Boot, pressing OK. Now, if your Proxmox server was to shut down due to a power failure or maintenance or whatnot, your Home Assistant VM will come back up. So it's time to start it and open your console. Now Home Assistant is booted up, and we're going to take note of the IP address given it to it, 192.168.519. And we also want to take note of this port right here. 8123. So at our web browser, we're going to type HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.5.19 colon 81.23 and press enter. Now Home Assistant's going to do its thing and begin installing. When we reach the next step, I'll return to show you what to do next. Okay, so now that Home Assistant's done installing, 
we can start by entering a name, a username, and a password. Now we can create our account and enter some information about us, including our country, language, time zone, and the units we're using. I'll be back in just a second after I do that. So now that we filled out that information, we're asked if we want to share some information with the Home Assistant team. I'm going to leave everything turned off. At least if they're looking for information, they default to everything turning turned off and allow you to decide whether or not you want to share that. I particularly like to see this. I'm going to hit next and it wants to know basically if we have any devices that we want to import. The only thing I particularly have right now is the media files on this particular computer. So we're just going to hit finish. And there you have it. We're up and running and logged into Home Assistant for the first time, ready to start configuring and deploying our smart system routines. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a good night.